Okay, today we are going to talk about how to find the power loss in a fluidic system. Okay, so the question reads Water flows through a horizontal T as shown in the figure below. Inlet velocity and pressures are 5 meters per second and 300 kilopascals respectively, while the exit 2 and 3 information are shown in the figure below. Find the power lost in this T. Okay? So I'm going to apply my steps that we established, okay? So for, first of all, let's look at what I am known and what I don't know, okay? Um, so let's take a look. Regarding the areas, let's take a look. This is 1, this is 0 0.8, this is 0 0.3. Good, so all my area information is supplied. Let's look at the velocity information. V1 is given, V3 is given, V2 right there is missing, okay? So I'm going to use my constant ratio of mass to find this V2 value. Okay, let's continue. Do I know all the pressure values? Okay, P1 is given, P2 is given, P3 is given, so I'm good to go. So the only thing that I see missing here is the velocity too. Okay, so this was the first step, reading the question, comprehending and showing what you understand, what is being asked, what's being given. Okay, the second step is to draw the control volume, which I'm going to attempt to do right over here. The next step is to write the assumptions. Okay. Slash special cases. So is this steady? That's a question. Yep. I don't see any time dependence. Is this constant density? Yes, because it's water that's given to me. And the third and the last one for now is the uniform flow because the velocity distribution uh, in anywhere is not supplied to me. So with these three assumptions I should go ahead and assess which equations I should use. And I actually went over it. So the first thing is I'm going to do the conservation of mass. As I recommended my um, initial, the first conservation principle that you should use is the conservation of mass as opposed to momentum or energy, okay? Because that's a simplest equation. You may get something that is missing in the other two equations. It's going to make your life easier to, for, from the mathematics perspective, okay? So with this, here's what it will happen. V inlet, A inlet will be equal to over the exits. Let's write the inlets here as well. V exit, A exit, right? So then inlet is only one. V1, A1 is equal to V2, A2, plus V3, A3. Those are the two exits that I have. Okay, so V1 is given as 5. A1 is given as 5 over 4. Um, let's take a look. 1, okay, times 1 square will be equal to V2, which is what I'm being asked to find, times pi over 4, 0 0.8 square, plus V3, which is given to me as 15, right, um, pi over 4, 0 0.3 square. Okay, so obviously I can cancel out the pi over 4s in here. So this becomes 5 is equal to um, 0 0.64 V2 plus, this becomes 1.35. So V2 will be equal to 5 minus 1.35 divided by 0 0.64. And when I do my math, I will obtain 4.7 meter per second, okay? So now I know all my velocities in my question. Then I'm going to look ahead to see what I'm being asked. Question asks me, find the power loss in this T. So let me go ahead and write the equation, okay? We have an equation for that, right? So it's going to be L dot minus W dot will be equal to over the exits, M dot exit times v squared over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the exits minus over the inlets m dot inlets v squared over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the inlets. So if I look at this particular question, um, I don't have any work generated. I don't see any turbine or any type of um, shaft work, etc. So that will be out, okay? And I have two exits and one inlet. So this will be basically zero. And from here, that's what being asked to find. L dot will be 
m dot exit will be m dot 2 times v2 square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the section 2 plus m dot 3 times v square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the section 3, right? minus, which is the inlet, m dot 1 times v square over 2 plus gz plus p over rho at the section number 1. Again, I like to look at what I know, what I don't know to ensure, okay? Let's look at the m dot values, m dot 1, okay? So that will be rho v a, obviously. This will be a1, v1, a1, right? So if I look at my case, that will be 1000, which is the density of the water that will be supplied to you, okay? Velocity by 1 was given as 5, and area 1 was pi over 4 times 1 square. And if I do my math, I will see that this is going to be 3,227 kilogram per second. That is the unit of m dot in the SI units. If I go out and do the second one, m dot 2 will be equal to rho v2a2, 1000 times the velocity 2 is 5.7 and it's going to be pi over 4 0 0.8 square right and if I do my math I'm going to get 2865 kilogram per second let's do the same thing for m.3 that's for in rho v3a3 that will be 1000 for the density v3 will be 15 that's given in the midi question statement this is going to be pi over 4 times 0 0.3 square, right? And from here I'll get 1060 kilogram per second. Okay, good. So I do know my mass flow rates in each section. How about the z? Well, the question says it's horizontal. So this t is sitting on a horizontal plane. So I don't have to worry about the z changes. This is not an assumption. This is a fact from the question. Let's look at the velocities. Uh, well, velocity 1, basically I know velocity 1, right? I know velocity 3, I know velocity 2, so those are known. But the pressures, well, they are given to me as well. So why don't I go ahead and insert this into my equation and see what type of number do I end up with, okay? L dot will be equal to M dot 2, which is 2865 times P is 200,000 divided by density p over rho plus v squared is 5.7 square divided by 2 right so this is for the second okay so this is the section 2 and I'm gonna add this to m dot 3 which is 1060 times the p3 was supplied to me in the question is 100,000 again I'm converting to Pascal plus 15 square over 2 this is for the 3 right and then I'm going to subtract this from the first one and the first one was let's see the m dot 3927 times 300,000 divided by 1000 right plus 5 square divided by 2 okay so then you can see there are some simplifications in here right so um but at the end of the day, what you're going to do is you're going to punch these numbers into the calculation the calculator. And what you're going to obtain is my L dot will be equal to minus 382,395. What's the unit of power in SI? Watts, right? Um, so if I convert this to the units that I'm more preferring, it's going to be 382.4 kilowatts. That is the power lost in this fluidic system. Here's the question. Well, is that reasonable that I, that I get a negative number, right? So I'm talking about this negative in front of the uh, L dot. Yes, I must get a negative number, okay? If I don't get a negative number, it means either I made a mathematical mistake or what I'm solving doesn't exist in real life, okay? If I get a positive loss, what that means is by going through this flow separating into two branches, I'm generating power. That's not quite how it works in real life, okay?